Let's talk about the WM real quick. Now, I used to live in Phoenix. I did a nickel upstate in Phoenix. We. Oui. And Phoenix sucks <laughs> to live there. It's hot all the time. Right. Now, the golf there is amazing. Uh, there's a lot to like about Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. I don't know what why anybody thought the Waste Management Phoenix Open would end well. So if you didn't see it, the WM, and if you've never been, and Jake and I have been, I think, two years to the tournament. Yeah. It essentially is a shit show. It, it is a bunch of drunk people watching a golf tournament and partying and yelling and screaming. And the Golf Channel had um, Smiley Kaufman. Um, it, like they were broadcasting from the 16th hole, right? Why did you think this would end well? A streaker did a headlong dive into a bunker on the 16th, which is the stadium hole. This is a bad, it was a bad look for golf. Several of the fans not on the 16th hole were yelling and screaming at other golfers. There were several incidents of drunk people being injured. A woman fell out of the third story uh, at the 16th with non-life-threatening injuries. You had people passed out drunk on walkways. And somehow people thought this would end well. Well, now they're talking about eliminating alcohol sales on the 16th hole. And Jake, I just think now that the, the horse is out of the barn, I don't know that there's any way to fix this, and especially by not selling alcohol. And I think the 16th hole at the Waste Management has always been a conversation. It's always been a thing where, where it's like, hey, is this a great thing for golf? Is this a bad thing for golf? Uh, you know, like it's always been a controversial situation. And I think the the alcohol portion of the the WM Open is a big deal because it's Scottsdale. Uh, it's already a party town. We we all know that. We know how many people like it's fitting that Nick Taylor won this tournament with how many Canadians come down to Scottsdale for the winter in Scottsdale. And I think that, you know, the the tournament just gets out of hand. It it, it becomes a thing where it, it is about the fans and their raucous ass behavior rather than the golf because without the golf you wouldn't have the 16th hole and that's what bothers me about this is it's like i'm i'm all for it hey you want to go to a golf tournament you want to get drunk you want to have a good time that's great go ahead and do that but we can't be getting drunk to the point where we think it's okay to fall out of three-story you know whatever building stands yeah. or, or where we're doing snow angels in the bunker or where we're streaking on the green. Like it's not cool. And I, and I think, yeah. you know, like there, there were all kinds of videos and stuff going around and, and, and you look at them and it's like, dude, like these people are tossed. Like they're like, there's fighting videos. There's all kinds of stuff. And by the way, also need to be pointed out that the weather did not help the situation because it was wet. People were slipping left and right because of how drunk they were. And they had nothing to do for, at 1.6 hours, you just kept selling beer and alcohol. Like, I I understand that people already view golf as like a snooty, snobby thing, but I'm telling you this is different. Yeah. And I think that people don't take it seriously that these guys are out there trying to make a living. They're quite literally our golfers that are living tournament to tournament financially where you're making a thousand dollars and that's got to keep your career going and pay your bills. Like it is not an easy living. And I think we focus on, you know, Oh, look at Scotty Scheffler. He's a multimillionaire. Sure he is. But is he the average golfer? He's not. The average golfer has trouble making cuts in and affording travel between tournaments. The average golfer doesn't have the ability to, hit elite shots when somebody is yelling in their backswing. And I, I think we forget that these guys are out there trying to make a living, and yet we're over-serving people, in my opinion. We're selling too much alcohol. And if that's not the case, why did you cut off alcohol sales? Mm -hmm. Ah, because there was too much drunk and disorderly. And the cops were getting there, – there. it came to a point where apparently the cops at the event were overwhelmed with drunk and disorderly. So they had to cut off alcohol sales. It's wild to me. And I think you look around golf at the at the majors, like you look at the Masters, and and why do you think that they don't let people get tossed at the Masters like that to this level? 
because there's no stopping them. What, like, how are you going to stop the mass of humanity walking around the golf course? You're not. So you have to, you have to manage the crowd, man. And, and it used to be a thing where we talked about the crowd, like at the masters on the 18th, when you're walking down to go win the tournament, we all know that video where tiger's walking and the crowd, like essentially engulfs him. Like that was a conversation in golf, but this has taken it to another level. And I just think it's not an excuse to be like, yeah, Oh, it's Scottsdale and it's a stadium hole. And Oh my God, this is amazing. Like literally the town shuts down for this golf tournament. Like, the 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 entire focus for four days is that golf tournament. That's it. Like Frank Lloyd Wright and Scottsdale Road is not where you want to be. No. And 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 I I look at places like I understand why the Kierlin Commons love the golf tournament. Everyone goes gets Old lit. Town. Old Town lit after that tournament every single day. I get it. It helps the local economy. I'm not even saying that you shouldn't do the tournament. But what I am saying is that there has to be a way to limit and and control the crowd on some level. And this year that did not happen. And as far as, you know, the Zach Johnson thing, the Zach Johnson thing is him just being tired of hearing someone chirping at him. But like I can't get down with people who jump the rope and go and jump in the bunker and think that that's Well, funny. Billy Horschel having that run in with a fan, I it, it, like Jordan Spieth is trying to hit a shot and fans are yelling and screaming while he's, you know, like what are we doing? Yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe I'm just being golf guy. I don't know. But I, I think there's know. a limit, even if you're not golf guy. Like I agree. Like I, I, I watch golf not for the dumbass fan, but for world class talent like Jordan Spieth. Like yeah. I want to see him make that great shot. I want to see Charlie Hoffman and Nick Taylor go back and forth and and grind that thing out. Notice there was no, there was no freaking uh, uh, people running across the course during the playoff. Right, because everyone knew, hey, this is a big deal. You, you're not going to be that guy in that moment. But when it's Friday and there's been like an eight-hour delay, people get bored, and that's when people get in trouble. Yeah. So the idea that you kept feeding them is absolutely bonkers to me. Yep. Giggity says the waste management shit show. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Giggity right. knows what it is. Uh, WM is garbage. See what he did there. Waste management. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, the Monty Ghost cocaine is a hell of a drug. Right. Okay. Right. Okay uh, is a hell of a drug. Uh, Walmart and Phoenix. Exactly. Exactly. Your time managed wastefully here at the waste management open. Right. Not good. Not good at all. Uh, people were also being idiots on the sidelines. Billy Horschel was having to go at folks for talking and being rowdy while players are in the middle of their swings. It's just unforgivable, man. Like just be better about it. Uh, hyped up on bucked up in large sums of money is a recipe for disaster. Uh, and I think the other thing with exactly. golf, dude, it's the only professional sport where they're literally standing on the playing field, man. They're standing a foot away from a golfer in some instances. Like, and most times it's not a big deal. Yeah. Most, most times, times it's, it's not. Yeah. Uh, the Calford X golf and tennis are not for getting turned up. They're not go to spring training to get drunk, <laughs> right? Like, that's what, yeah. Because I think, like, at spring training, they have the facility to handle you, right? Like, you're not going to, if you're going to run onto a major league baseball field, you're going to get dropped. Yeah. Like, you just know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, Mike Smith says, this is a sleepy Monday morning. I think there's a lot going on, which we're going to get to here in a minute. Aaron Wilson. Um, okay. That's fine. Uh, definitely, Mike. Uh, Mike Smith, got to uh, take care of yourself, Aaron Wilson. You do. Uh, getting drunk at spring training sounds like a voice, uh, of experience. I have never, I don't, we talked about this last night yeah. too. I don't understand getting blackout drunk where you had people of all ages, mind you, who paid really good money. It's hundreds of dollars to get a pass for the 16th hole. Getting blackout drunk where you're passed out in your seat, getting escorted out where you are so drunk you fell down the stairs and you were passed out at the bottom of the stairs to the point where um, they had to come and physically remove you. Where you cannot walk straight down a sidewalk, you're so drunk. You fall out of a grandstand and get you end up in the hospital because you're... I've never understood it. Yeah. I don't. 